Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, February the 9th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. Uh, we have uh, blizzard conditions here in North Jersey right now. Uh, gusty winds and lots of snow. We may break a record. Um, <clears throat> I have a couple of devotionals for you today, but first, I'd like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day uh, that we're here to serve you. And thank you for answering prayer, Father, and for hearing us always. Uh, we know that you walk with us, that you hear our thoughts, and you know when we rise from our chair, and you know when we sit down. And you know how many hairs there are in, on our head. You know everything about us, Father. You're, you're everywhere, at all places, at all times. How wonderful is that, that you did not abandon us, Father, that you're with us until you come and take us home. We love you so much, Father, so much. <laughs> in Jesus' name, amen. This one is called Shallow and Profound. Whether you eat or drink or whether you do, do all to the glory of God. And that's from 1 Corinthians 10.31. Beware of allowing yourself to think that the shallow aspects of life are not ordained by God. They are ordained by him equally as much as the profound. We sometimes refuse to be shallow, not out of our deep devotion to God, but because we wish to impress other people with the fact that we are not shallow. <laughs> this is a sure sign of spiritual pride. We must be careful, for this is how contempt for others is produced in our lives. And it causes us to be walking, be a walking rebuke <clears throat> to other people because they are more shallow than we are. Beware of posing as a profound person. God became a baby. To be shallow is not a sign of being sinful, nor is shallowness an indication that there is no depth to your life at all. The ocean has a shore. Even the shallow things of life, such as eating and drinking, walking and talking, are ordained by God. These are all things our Lord did. He did them as the Son of God, and he said, A disciple is not above his teacher. And you could read about that in Matthew 10.24. We are safeguarded by the shallow things of life. We have to live the surface, common sense life in a common sense way. Then when God gives us the deeper things, they are obviously separated from the shallow concerns. Never show the depth of your life to anyone but God. We are so nauseatingly serious, so desperately interested in our own character and reputation that we refuse to behave like Christians in the shallow concerns of life. Make a determination to take no one seriously except God. You may find that the first person you must be the most critical with as being the greatest fraud you have ever known is yourself. Yeah, you know, um, it's, it's very easy to get pulled into that. And the more time we spend with the Father, uh, it, it can corrupt our perception of other people because we make a, an assumption or a determination 
that they're not putting in as much time or they're not doing this and it, it, it you could see how easily something wonderful can turn into um, um, judgment or criticism of others so um, yeah it's the smaller things in life that keep us balanced they keep us human <laughs> while we walk spiritually with the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit we need to be grounded you know it's just like a radio you know has a ground wire so that you can get the reception so that shallowness that we have to walk on this earth keeps us grounded <laughs> like an antenna <laughs> this is called the distraction of contempt what what um, have mercy on us O Lord have mercy on us for we are exceedingly filled with contempt and that's from Psalm 123 3 what we must be aware of is not damage to our belief in God but damage to our Christian disposition or state of mind quotes take heed to your spirit that you do not deal treacherously unquote and that's from Malachi 2:16. our state of mind is powerful in its effects it can be the enemy that penetrates right into our soul and distracts our mind from God there are certain attitudes we should never dare to indulge in if we do we will find that they have distracted us from faith in God until we get back to a quiet mood before him our faith is of no value and our confidence in the flesh and human ingenuity is what rules our lives beware of the quotes cares of this world unquote and that's from mark 419 they are the very things that produce the wrong attitudes in our soul it is incredible what enormous power there is in simple things to distract our attention away from God refuse to be swamped by the quotes cares of this world unquote another thing that distracts us is our passion for vindication St. Augustine prayed, quote, O oh Lord, deliver me from this lust of always vindicating myself, unquote. Such a need for constant vindication destroys our soul's faith in God. Don't say, I must explain myself, or, quote, I must get people to understand me, unquote. Our Lord never explained anything. He left the misunderstandings or misconceptions of others to correct themselves. When we discern that other people are not growing spiritually and allow that discernment to turn to criticism, we block our fellowship with God. Ne God never gives us discernment so that we may criticize, but that we may intercede. Amen. And, you know... If, if you find that this has happened to you, don't beat yourself up over it. Just come to God and say, wow, God, I didn't realize that, you know, um, I was in that place. And um, you have to become aware of something before you can ask God to remove it. And a lot of times, that's the nature of sin. That's the nature of being on this earth, in this cursed world, is that... Um, we, we're walking right and all of a sudden we're getting pulled and we don't realize that we're getting pulled until like I just read that so now if if that's you if you find yourself uh, within those words that I just read so now you became aware of it and now you can make the you know you can put it on the altar um, at the at the foot of the cross to our Lord and ask him to remove it from you but you know if you're not aware of it you don't know what you're doing and that's it. It's a del it, the, this whole world is like a big uh, funhouse with, um, you know, scary funhouse with, um, you know, like remember that room we used to go in? It's like a room of mirrors where you kept bumping into yourself and you couldn't find your way out. Uh, that's kind of what it's like, um, you know. And the word of God is the truth, and that's why we need to keep going into reading the Word of God so that we God can keep giving us these revelations so that so that we can 
um, he can help us with the help of the Holy Spirit to make these uh, corrections in our thinking and in our behavior and in our feelings towards others. And on that note, I'll say have a beautiful day in the Lord. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. He's coming very soon. Keep looking up.